Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how to handle conservation of momentum problems with two dimensions. And this is specifically for our physics and AP physics classes. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a video of a simulation I ran through a site called FET, which you're probably familiar with because it's a pretty amazing site. And this is an example of a two-dimensional momentum collision that you just saw. I'll put a link to FET's website where you can play around with the simulation if you want on your own in the description below for this video. But that's what we're going to be dealing with in terms of analyzing two-dimensional momentum problems and figuring out how to solve for unknowns with them. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. So the big idea here is that you want to split up conservation of momentum problems into an x-axis and a y-axis and solve for the momentum in each axis. So then recombine them using the Pythagorean theorem in trig. I'll show you how to do this, but this is a graphic of the type of problem that we're going to be dealing with today. So you've got two vectors to begin with. During the collision, they collide. And then after the collision, they're going to have an elastic collision. And they both have velocity vectors here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the example problem. This is given information about the first object over here, both before and after the final velocity here, for instance. And this is information about the second object, both before the collision and after the collision is going to be our unknown. So we're going to ask what is the velocity of the second object after they collide with each other and in what direction is that going to be? So one of the first things we're going to do is we've got three vectors that we need to deal with and break up into components. So our V1 initial and our V2 initial and our V1 final we need to break up into all its components. Our initial velocity components for one this is going to be easy because this is just completely in the x-axis. So this is 1.23 meters per second, and this is 0 meters a second right here. Then we move on to the second one. We're going to say solve for the v2 initial. So we're just doing a little bit of trig here using the definition of cosine and coming up with our v2 initial on the y. And we're going to do similar things using sine over here to come up with our v2 initial in the x. So all we're doing are initial velocity components here. We're going to take that and do some similar things with our final velocity for 1. That's something else we have to do. So I've got check marks here to represent we've covered these two things. Next, we're going to do this. And notice that we have a vector here. So we take this vector right here, and we can make it into the hypotenuse of a right triangle and solve for v1 final in the x, v1 final in the y. So you're going to use the sine function here to be able to solve for v1 final in the x. And it's really crucial to remember that this is going to be a negative. So check this out. So this one right here, notice that if we took that vector and broke it into components, this x component of this final vector for 1 is going to be in the negative direction. You have to remember to make these things negative or else you're going to get the problem wrong. Then we're going to work on v final in the y, v final for 1 in the y. And so we do some more component work here and we end up with this answer for v1 final in the y. Notice that should be positive because that component for 1 is moving upwards. I'm assuming up is positive and to the right is positive and to the left is negative and down is negative. All right, so we continue with our work and we say, what can we do with this now? Now we've done everything. I've got check marks here, here, and here. The only thing I don't know is this final vector over here. So I'm going to start with the x and say the big idea is that your total momentum in the x initially is equal to the total momentum for the x final. And that's called conservation of momentum. And what happens in the x is independent of what happens in the y. So as long as we can keep that straight in our mind, we can do this. So we say, all right, it's a 2 to 2 scenario. I'll put a link in the upper right to suggest what I mean by a 2 to 2 scenario. but two objects before the collision, two objects after the collision. So we've got two terms on the left, two terms on the right. We can go ahead and start to think about what are we looking for. Well, what do you think? What are we looking for here? There are a lot of variables. What we're looking for is v2 x final. So we want to isolate for that. So I'm going to show the work for isolating for that variable. And once we've isolated, we're ready to plug in our numbers. It's really crucial at this point that you make any of the velocities that should be negative, negative. That's what I've done here. And when you plug in your numbers, this is going to be your answer for V2 and the X final. Now we're going to do something similar for the Y axis. The sum of the momentum in the Y, initially speaking, is equal to the sum of the momentum in the Y, finally speaking. And so that's conservational momentum in the Y axis. So really crucial. This is the big idea. 
you can do the conservation of momentum in the X and now we're doing in the conservation of momentum in the Y. So we're going to go ahead and continue with that. This is also a two to two scenario. So we've got two terms initially, two terms finally. We go ahead. This is going to be isolated over here. We get rid of our V initial in the Y and we solve for our unknown again. And so I go ahead and show the work for that. And we plug in our numbers, remembering to make this negative. Any of the velocities that need to be made negative have to be made negative, or else we'll get the problem wrong. And we get this value. So, all right, we've done the components for our final vector in the x and the y. What do you think we're going to do with that? Any ideas? Well, what we're going to do with that is we're going to make a right triangle. So effectively, we know this v2 final in the y, v2 final in the x. We're going to come up with this over here. How could we go about doing that? How could we use two legs of a right triangle and come up with the hypotenuse? Well, what we're going to do is the Pythagorean theorem. So that's what we start doing. I go ahead and sub in our values and we end up solving for our unknown here. That's the V2 final and the Y. So there is one more thing that you should know how to do, and that is how to solve for this angle right here. So it just depends on how you set it up. This is the original way that I set up the problem, so I'm going to roll with that here, and I'm going to show you how to do this. You're going to use arctangent here, which is like kind of like inverse tangent, but correctly, it's called arctangent. So we don't want the tangent of theta, though. We want theta itself. So to get rid of this tangent function, we take the arctangent of both sides. That will cancel out this tangent function, and we're left with theta is equal to this value here, 37.9 for this angle right here. Now that's if I would have set it up this way, I could have set it up a different way. I could have drawn this angle over here, and so this would give us a different theta. I should probably call this theta two and theta one. By the way, what do you think the relationship is between theta one and theta two? Well, hopefully you'll notice that in a moment. We're gonna go ahead and run the numbers again using arctangent here, and we come up with an answer that these two angles are complements of each other. So if you didn't spot that originally, hopefully you can spot that now and get the idea. So hopefully this has been helpful. I've done screencasts on almost the entire year of physics concepts, and also I've done a fair amount of screencasts on AP physics concepts as well. So if you're interested in hearing more, take a look at the playlists in the description down below. Take care and have a great day.